Hello, and thank you for taking time to watch this short video on LaCert software. Uh, we developed this video because we think it's a good first step in really understanding the overall value of LaCert in a very short period of time. What we're going to show here is the overall design of the tax program and how this design can make you more efficient. And really, you and your staff can be up and running in less than 30 minutes. Well, let's take a quick look at LaCert. Uh, when you open the tax program, the first screen you see is what we call the client screen. A lot of what you do in LaCert is done from here. Management of your client files, like making copies or backing them up, or if you want to assign a password, set custom statuses, a lot of those things are done directly on the client screen. But really, the whole program is based on the five tabs that you see in the upper left-hand side of your screen. Five tabs. Um, and what we're doing here is we are matching the normal workflow that you all go through as you enter your tax returns and, and you complete them. You enter data, then you review them, and then you check for errors. And that's really how our program is laid out. All you're going to do is move from clients to detail to forms to diagnostics to analysis to complete returns. The first tab that's highlighted right now is clients, and that's why we're seeing a list of all of our customers. If I double click on the Jenkins return, and open it, you'll notice that my tab now is on detail. And this is where you enter all the data in the search. I love this screen. We call this the table of contents. It's the main page of data entry. And what we love about it is it shows every possible screen you would ever use to do a return on one page. There isn't the necessity for you ever to drill down and find certain screens, which makes it really, really easy to understand. Now, we're not a forms-based input. Some programs, the way the input style they might use is you go to the form first, click line seven, and then go back to the W-2 screen. As you look at our screen, you'll notice that it's a series of input sheets that matches the flow of page one and two of the 1040. General information, payments and penalties, income, deductions, credits, taxes, state and local, and miscellaneous forms. So if you want to enter an income item, like maybe Social Security benefits, click on the line for Social Security benefits. If it's wages, wages, uh, rentals, or depreciation, or adjustments to income, it's all there, and you can click on it. Now, you'll notice certain screens are bolded. Bolded screens indicate that you've already entered some data on that screen. In addition to bolding the screens, every screen in use is also represented with a series of tabs across the lower part of the page. Very easy. Now, why do we create tabs? Well, we figure you don't have to always come back to the table of contents to get to another screen that you know already has data on it. So you're only really one click away from all your active screens. The example is if I click on business income and I enter their current year income, cost of goods, expenses, and then I'd like to update the rental property. It's a tab at the bottom, Schedule E. I click it. Here's my rental screen. I want to go to the adjustment screen for like an IRA or Roth uh, itemized deduction, Schedule A. Add and remove a dependent. On the left, there's a tab for dependent. Very, very simple. But what's nice is you might do a return in one year, transfer all that forward to the current year, and when you open the return for the very first time, your screens will be bolded. You'll have tabs representing those screens down on the bottom part of this page. I've never had anyone tell me that they don't understand what we're doing here. It's very logical, but I feel that the biggest difference between us and our competitors, there's no layering. It's just plug in the data on the screen. Now, the next tab at the top is called Forms. Uh, that's where you go now, the next tab, to actually see what, what has been created based on your entries in detail. You don't enter data here. It's a review of the completed return. On the left is your navigation, U.S., California. U.S. is selected, so the bottom shows me all my federal worksheets, uh, letter, invoice, forms, everything that's part of the return. As you click between forms, we do something really unique here. And when we create, uh, we create a lot of worksheets. Worksheets are showing you the detailed calculations of certain numbers, and we put the worksheet on the form. So if you want to know how we've arrived at, at the IRA deduction, click WKS, and we'll pull up the worksheet so you can see it. So it's nice to have those on the form. Our clients like that. They don't have to go looking for things on the left. If I go back to the top of the 1040, we also have another function that's my favorite feature in review. And even though it's not a forms input, you can go to any line on your return and right click on it. And we have a function we call jump to input. And what this is, is it's basically showing you the source of all the inputs that could potentially hit line seven. So if I open up and jump to input, it's going to tell me this 103,000 is coming from W2. Here are my two employers and here are the numbers coming from the W2. If I, if I need to edit the second W2, I click it. It takes me directly back to the input. Let's click. 
and it drops me right back on the W-2. Maybe I want to change that to uh, 23,000. And then I go back to my form and automatically the form will update. As you can see, now it changes into 93. Okay. Um, next, uh, another qualified dividends is another line that shows you this example. So I've got $8,400. I jump to input. It tells me that this 8,400 is coming from a 1099 DIV. Smith Barney and Citicorp both have amounts. Uh, it also tells me that it could be coming from a partnership K1. Here are the names of the partnerships I've got and the amounts. So the big difference here is that a lot of programs have the ability for you to move from the form back to the data entry, but they don't give you any source. They don't bring up the box and show you the details. They'll just take you to the place that is really most obvious, like the W-2 always goes back to the wage line, but it doesn't offer things like, you know, uh, tips, other things like that. So it's very, very helpful, especially if you've never used the program. You can always, there's no black box. You can always find the source of your data. Next is diagnostics. Very easy to explain. There are two sections. There are critical warnings, and what I have right now here are informational warnings. Critical warnings are things that would hold up the return from being electronically filed. So let me go back to data entry. I'm going to open up my Schedule C, and on the second Schedule C, I'm going to remove the business code just to give you an example of, of, of a, what we call a critical diagnostic warning. Anything in the top section is critical. You need to clear this stuff up. If you click, it'll link you to the field where you fix it. The informational diagnostics are very, very in-depth. Um, these will give you heads up on things like we've calculated or figured an underpayment penalty if you want to, uh, and we include it in the balance due of the return if you'd like to suppress the penalty, click, and we'll take you to where you can override the calculation. So a lot of advice, a lot of practical, great information that you'll find in your informational diagnostics. I've had people tell me this is the primary reason they use our program because we find things that other programs won't. Finally, the analysis tab is more around, you know, you've completed the return and you'd like to see some other information that maybe you can share with your client. So our tax engineers have done a really nice job, worked really hard to incorporate this into the software, showing you different retirement contributions, like they could have contributed 7621 to a self-employed retirement plan, future tax savings, tax tips, letting you know what the uh, taxable income is, what bracket and how much it would need to increase next year. And also comparing what we call Schedule A and Schedule C comparison flags, which will compare this tax return to the national average for people who are taking the same deduction with a similar AGI. Okay? So as you can see, in a very short period of time, you've just been trained on the CERT. Congratulations. Very, very easy program. Now, obviously, I just scratched the surface on the overall capabilities of the software. We do also do a 60-minute webinar on the CERT where I get into much greater detail on e-filing, on managing client screen, entering data. So, uh, you know, we appreciate your interest in the CERT and anything we can do to, to earn your business, uh, we will do it. Thank you.